today on Local Connection, we're having a fringe-tastic time. Join us as we connect with one of the Lower Mainland's premier arts festivals. On today's show... I know my brother's right, Mike! Celebrating 27 years of theater for everyone. The eclectic and always independent Vancouver International Fringe Festival. It's extra creepy. Also, tail slides, ollies and wipeouts. The eighth annual Tour de Surrey is in full force. And Mono Guitari. This is where almost over 8,000 Japanese Canadians lived in Vancouver. A walk through history with some of the region's earliest Japanese settlers. See all this and more right now on Local Connection. And welcome to Local Connection, a show about the places and people that make our home, the West Coast, such a great place to live. I'm Marnie Maines. And I'm Clayton Timko. We're here at Granville Island, one of the locations hosting some of the 550 performances taking part at this year's Vancouver International Fringe Festival. Coming up a little bit later, we'll be talking to some of the performers about some of the exciting things audiences can expect. But first, we're jumping on board and heading to Surrey, where Miguel Ramos takes us to the 8th Annual Tour de Surrey Skateboarding Championships. 5 O's, 50 50s and ollies. That's what we saw on one of the stops of the 8th Annual Hippie Mike's Tour de Surrey. Well, Tour de Surrey is uh, a skateboard competition. It's a series of contests that goes through Surrey. And I used to actually go to every park in Surrey, but this year I, I changed it to just go to each town center. So I'm only doing five competitions out of eight skate parks. Tour de Surrey was created because Hippie Mike saw a need to showcase the many talented Surrey skateboarders. Uh, originally, I was always a little bummed out. We didn't have very many competitions going on in Surrey. And we had a lot of good skateboarders out here, so I felt like we were being left out. So I decided, okay, well, why don't I organize something where we have more stuff for skateboarding than anywhere else? And uh, I brought that idea to the city of Surrey and they were totally excited about it and we just kind of partnered on the idea and here we are eight years later. What I really enjoy about skateboarding is that just, it really makes you just feel good. Like that feeling you get when you land a new trick or when you do something that you've never done before, it just feels really, really good. For some, this is just fun, but for others, there are Andrew Reynolds and Tony Hawk dreams. Well, I mean, I hope one day I could go big and be one of the best in the world and compete with the other pros, but right now I'm just enjoying it and having fun and just hanging out with my friends. Even though there's some heavy competition, the skateboarding world is one of community and support. I just love that the fact that it's just one big community and everybody's friends. There's not a ton of hate and like you can go out into like any skate park and it's almost every time you go you're gonna see somebody that you know and that you skate with and it just it's really cool. That was awesome. The thing I enjoy most about skateboarding is the whole culture and the community. If you fall down, any kid falls down, the whole park is right there ready to help. <laughs> The concrete is hard. So yes, skateboarding can be dangerous. And safety is the number one priority for this skateboarding mom. I worry if he gets hurt. I mean, it's really important that he, he wears a helmet. If you want to skateboard, you need to wear your helmet. So there's sometimes a little bit of a worry of him getting hurt. Um, but you know, there's risk to everything. So as long as he's having fun, that's all that matters. If you want to find out about the results of this year's Tour de Surrey or get involved with their competition next year, check out their website. Well, back here at Granville Island in front of Liberty Wines, there's a wide variety of culinary options to choose from for any and every occasion, along with some of the finest wines the world has to offer. With such great selection, how do you choose the right wine for you? Skylar Bayer makes it his mission to find out. Wine is a drink best served, well, educated. Going to a fancy chic restaurant, a little intimidated by the wine menu? Or how about a hot date? 
want to order them a glass of wine, but a little worried as to what kind of wine to choose for them? Do you always get the same bottle of wine at the liquor store? Well, Local Connection is here at the refinery to give you a crash course on the basics of wine. From such an abundant selection, it's always great to know which wines are most popular. Peter shows us some of the hottest wines of the season. A couple of the wines that we have seen, uh, that we've done really well with here is the Vivacious by Van Vesten. This is another uh, wine out of British Columbia. So this is the kind of stuff you can drink on its own, or if you have uh, some great kind of salads or stuff that's going to balance well with that acidity, this will go really well. We've seen a lot of this Nero Davila, which is an Italian wine, comes all the way down from the tip of Sicily. The, uh, the Joao Rosé, which we serve in house here, it's the, if, you, if you take a look at the color, it's just so vibrant and like it really just kind of the pink explodes through the bottle. Very bright. Pink Very pink. bright, yeah. And then they actually, they call this uh, their version of summer in the bottles. I think people worry about, am I a guy? Can I order a bottle of rosé or a glass <laughs> of rosé? I have no problem sitting anywhere on a Yelltown patio drinking a bottle of rosé because no no. I'm confident in my rosé and my uh, drinking abilities. <laughs> Time to learn the basics. From the moment wine is first poured into the cup, to the flavorful aftertaste left on my palate. And who knew the cork of a wine bottle had anything to do with the quality of a wine? The reason they give you the cork is just for you to take a look at it to be sure that it hasn't fully ballooned out or that it doesn't look damaged or that there's streaks for the wine has come through. Those can be signs that air has gotten to the bottle and the wine has been oxidized. So it's just something you look at and if you want to kind of be professional and snazzy, you take a look at it, you give the nod and you just put the cork down or you give it back to the waiter, it's up to you guys. Twist off cap does not mean cheap or bad quality wine. It simply means it's a, it's a system where the air isn't supposed to get inside. It's for primarily fresh white wines, stuff that's gonna be drank with this, the, this vintage or the next vintage. The first thing we do is the appearance. So you look at your wine. Now what you're looking for here to see, is it clean, is it dull? Because um, sometimes a dull wine can mean it's already gone off as well. You're looking at the intensity of the color, what color is it? Is it like a ruby, a purpley color, which kind of means maybe a younger red wine? Okay. Or does it have that brown, uh, you know, that mahogany, that, 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 that's showing that it's got some age to it and maybe some more complexity to it. Uh, and then lastly, you're gonna look at the rim of the wine. So as the wine gets older, mm -hmm. the rim starts to get a little bit white. So okay. that's what we're doing when we're looking at it. Okay. If you really want, you can swirl it and look for the legs of the wine. But if you're on a nice date, sometimes there are better legs to look at than the one in your glass. <laughs> so once we've taken a look at the wine, the next thing you do is we're gonna smell it. We're gonna check out the nose of the wine. But don't be afraid to get your nose really in there. So get right in there and take a big whiff. Once we've got the nose, we know how intense it is, we know the flavors that we're getting from it and we're happy with that, then we're going to go ahead and take a, take a sip of it. And I'm going to teach you how to do the slurp. And watch out, this could get messy on your first date. Wow. The key is to try, there's different parts of your mouth and your tongue will mm -hmm. taste different things. Okay. So, you know, you're going to get some of the sweetness. If it's a sweet wine, you'll taste that more on the front. Mm -hmm. You'll get the, the sour and stuff on the mm -hmm. side of your mouth, more towards the back. So you have to use your mouth as a tool to kind of tell you what's going on in this wine. If I can give one kind of tip for the entire day today is irrelevant of how much a wine costs or how good someone else says it is, the best wine is the wine you like. Absolutely. So if it's $7 a bottle, but you love it, yeah. then that's the best wine out there. Yeah. If it's 500 and I love selling it, then that's the best wine out there for you. So the best thing you can do is get out, try as many wines as you possibly can, look for events around the city where they have wine tastings, or for example, at the refinery, we do 40% off all wines every Tuesday night, so it's a great chance to try something new. Well, Peter, I have learned a lot about wine today and so many things that I've never, ever suspected about wine, like things about the cork and even how to open it. And it's been a great learning experience. And I want to thank you for uh, teaching us how to uh, enjoy wine to its uh, full potential. So You're very welcome. Cheers. Cheers. In Vancouver, this is Skylar Bear for Local Connection. From choosing the best wine to choosing the best dessert, Jack Fox gets a lesson in the art of baking. Yummy. Thanks, guys. Uh, we're in the home of professional baker Alexis Bremner. What are we going to make today? We're going to make butterscotch scones. All right, so what are the ingredients? Well, in the big bowl, we have flour, sugar, salt, um, baking powder, and cream of tartare. And then we're going to add um, sour cream, baking soda, butter, and an egg. First, we're going to um, add the baking soda to the sour cream. Do so you want, like, no clumps? Yeah. The next step is to mix the dry ingredients. And so you can do that, too. Okay. Right. We'll add our butter. And we're just going to work the butter into the flour. We don't want to mix it so much, just get it so it's incorporated. 
So now we're gonna add our egg, and Jack, you can whisk that. Okay. A little bit quicker. Oh, all right. How's that? A little bit more. All right. It's a lot of work. I'm gonna get muscles from this. <laughs> all right. Go in the hole. And we'll add the sour cream. This is the part where you get your hands right in there. Okay. And you mix it. I'll you want to do that? Sure, I'll try. Does it get less sticky or does it always stay this way? Um, no, it actually always stays this way. <laughs> Apparently this is like the mixing. This is not the kneading. This is, is the, correct? yeah, this is the mixing. Once you knead it, it'll come together and be less sticky. At this point, it's mixed enough um, to add our chips. And you just want to make sure that the butterscotch is going all the way through the dough. All right, so... so now we're ready to knead. Good. We're just gonna dump the whole bowl out. So what's the difference between um, the mixing, which I was doing in the bowl, and the kneading that you're doing, the, the clean part? <laughs> well, besides being cleaner, um, by applying pressure to the dough, you're actually pressing all the ingredients together, okay. which makes them react, and it's gonna make our scones nice and high. All right, Alexis, it's been 10 minutes, and we've been smelling it. So what do we do next? Next, we're gonna press it out a little bit more, and then we're gonna cut it. Okay, so how do we press it out? So we're just gonna add a little flour to the bottom. And you'll see it's like a nice, solid piece of dough now. We're just gonna press it out so it's not so thick. Now we're just gonna mark it so that we can know where to mark or cut. How did you become a professional baker? My bosses came up to me and was like, Alexis, put these breads, the Viennas and Cobbs, which are different shaped loaves, on the top. And I was like, well, why? They're cheap and <laughs> these are more expensive breads. Why can't we sell, we want to sell those more? He's like, well, this is the baker's art. And that stuck with me. I, I was, at that moment, I was just like, well, I want to make art. And so I started to campaign more for myself to become a baker and, and they saw my eagerness and they, they taught me. So now that we're done this, it's ready for the oven. It's gonna bake for about 12 to 15 minutes at 350. All right, sounds like they're ready. I think they are. Oh, these are amazing. So you can just put them right here. They look amazing. They do look good. They are perfect. So let's see what they look like on the inside. Oh, they look good. Okay, so to learn how to make these delicious butterscotch scones, check out our Facebook page. And uh, thanks again, Alexis. This is Jack Fox signing off for a Local Connection. Now let's take a bite.